for it now. All right, so we're here to talk about <coughs> couples counseling and uh, in particular, um, infidelity coming up in couples counseling and, and your struggles around it, uh, your struggles in, in working with it. Yeah. Yeah, tell me more. Okay, sure. Yeah, I, uh, I started my work with this couple uh, in October, exactly yep. one day before um, disclosure. Okay. Of this uh, infidelity, and uh, it was a very uh, intense session actually. And uh, it was like one and a half hour session, and the only thing that they could do was just the getting into a uh, woman's emotion, you know. Mm -hmm. And I had to project, you know, because it's, I couldn't yeah. actually let her just stay quiet and get into her emotion. Yeah. And I'm guessing the, the, the female partner was the one that was cheated on? Yes. Yes. Okay. Actually, yeah. So they are in, sorry, I just jumped in. To, That's okay. They are in uh, their middle age and uh, they are both high functional and they have uh, teenage kids. And uh, both sides, family, they used to live with them for a long time. And but recently they are they moved out and they have their own independent life, yeah. different place. So, yeah. uh, but they both feel responsible for their family, and um, so the dynamic was like that, you know, before this happened. Mm -hmm. But um, okay, so anyways, like I could uh, manage, you know, to make to make her really understood and and um, just. Uh, I understood I uh, under, when you say understood you mean understood by you or by by partner understood by me first and after I asked the partner the, his partner I gave him kind of like instruction that you know first let her you know under you know kind of mirroring and validating and okay. empathizing and um, we get to a very very good good place okay. you know the woman was very calm Okay. and very centered and uh, so anyways we, we we just you know kept going like yeah. next and that day. was about that was about three months ago that the disclosure yes. came out and you had this uh, session focusing yeah. on her. so we started with every with one and a half <clears throat> hour session and okay. like one month uh, like last month we started like every two weeks okay and everything was going great, you know, they were becoming very close, like again, like honeymoon stage, building this relationship, going on trip, and really mm -hmm. amazingly good. That mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was actually trying to shake that board to get something out of that. And I like um, triggering something because I thought mm. that it, it's like you're saying that you felt they were so strong. You were trying to shake it to see a stress test. Yeah, to see how, to see how if well there it is feels. some. Yeah, the I reality. Understand. Because I, yeah. I, you know, just, it's it was so actually it's too good to be true for you. Too good, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. Anyways, uh, something that happened, and it was good because I started like focusing on in front of each other, like uh, the family of origin, attachment, uh, history. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I wanted the other partner be, you know, witnessing and sure, I got good information and I started even empathizing with the, um, the male uh, and uh, also got some of his emotions and some of the like lesser motivation behind that. Mm -hmm. and, and then something that happened I, recently. Yes. I'm anticipating. Last, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something happened is that. Uh, the wife actually found something in social media that you know that woman the other woman uh, put something like a comment you know, like i don't know something in social media and the guy mm -hmm. the her husband actually put a comment made a comment uh, okay very short nothing really specific but all of a sudden it was totally like a huge again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. chaos and they okay. um, yeah but they could manage actually um, okay. to stay together for one week. And after they came, you know, to our session mm -hmm. and it was really, I was so confused. Okay, I what, <laughs> you know, yeah. I was so like uh, um, inspiring, especially women yeah. who just, yeah. you know, for billions yeah. of reasons and yeah. all of a sudden 
I was. You got, you got, you got the boat rocked. You got the stress test. Yes. Yes. You got what you asked for, in a way. Yeah. 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 So I, I just thought that, you know, I, I just need to be present and just listen, listen, listen. For 30 minutes, she was talking and talking. I was just listening and nodding, you know, because I need, I thought that she just need to. Tell me a little bit. What was it uh, around? What was she talking about for those 30 minutes? Just so I have a. a okay. Sense. She actually brought some other stuff that, you know, she saw that comment because I told uh, her husband that you need to actually be so open yeah no of course her... but was it my my question is like was it about uh is it like a lot of anger coming out for 30 minutes oh, okay or, a feeling? Or, or what yeah yeah something betray. like that you know i betray. feel betrayed. okay yeah i feel that uh, yeah you know. it's like it's like there was a contract uh where you are not supposed to talk to her have anything to do with this other woman something like that yes yeah yes of course and it was you know, like, it was violated yeah 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 and also they had again lots of good memories that she was mm -hmm. questioning that it was true or it was just the acting you were all all erased from this one yeah. uh comment yeah on social yeah. media yeah yeah okay and no not just that because she started digging more into stuff you know his his right. all the stuff and he realized mm. that she she realized that actually he was in this relationship for more than one year more than what he was saying before he was saying yes. one year before and it was actually more than one yeah okay okay and that was also something that she was just she was totally like ready to accept as long as you're honest now one year yes. we can move forward yeah. but now i'm finding out new things that wasn't yeah, yeah. said to me before yeah so okay. that was like that again, was that was your last session that was my last session and okay. again we got to a good point because Thanks God, they trust me a lot, you know, and uh, also, thank, asked, also, also not just God, but thank you, thank you and the work you're doing. <laughs> I don't know, like, yeah, it's just, uh, I feel honored, you know, to be that, yeah. in that role, you yeah. know, it's too much uh, pressure, you think that, you know, you have kind of this power sometimes, you know, to change the, it's, uh, it's a lot of um, responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. So. I ask uh, at the end of our session, I ask a uh, uh, wife that uh, to, to book a session individual with me. What and was the motivation for you for that? I sometimes I think I, I do this, uh, to be honest with you, I take one person, one person, like one individual with guy or woman, you know, because I think that sometimes something will be received by one, but the other person is actually resisting. And I need to understand, or, and even sometimes I start working with one person through EMDR because I see a block and mm. we can't actually move forward. So the purpose is so that you can understand the block and help that ind through individual therapy work through the block. And I'm assuming yes. also to kind of build um, a, re a deeper relationship with them so that they trust you more to, to guide to be the guide to, to help yes. with uh, un unearthing that block. Yes. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. And sometimes, you know, I encourage them to go and work with uh, another individual, you know, individual therapist. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and uh, but for this one, I know that this woman doesn't have any support, you know, she's entrepreneur, she doesn't have a good self care. You she mean, uh, you mean other than you and him? Uh, yes. Okay. No, because, it, you know, this is couple session. It's not like a self, you know, like individual session that all of my attention, you know, yeah. I put on her. Yeah. So, and she doesn't have yeah. tools. She has lots of also blocks and stuff yeah. from her family yeah. that yeah. she needs to, it actually contributes to her reaction to this situation. Sure. You know? Sure. So, and actually I had a, an individual session and I started EMDR with her about okay. like the image when you heard the second, like, this yeah, I understand. What was the image and the trigger of what happened? Where did it take you back? It was also very good, you know. That, uh, okay. but my question is, uh, if I want to stay really committed to EFT and just sometimes I see resistance, especially when it comes to infidelity, people they don't seem like that much patient. Yeah. You know, they just write the day. Yeah. You know, they they can. They are so like let's say triggered that they can't. I understand. I understand your question. You know? I understand your question. So I think EFT is the perfect model for this. Of course I'm biased, 
because this is this is how I work. The reason though is it incorporates the idea and the experience of trauma into the model. It incorporates the whole person's previous experience, yeah. previous attachments, their own individual attachment, meaning how they connect to both themselves and how they attach to other people that are close to them. Yeah. It incorporates this. And it also incorporates, when I say trauma, it, it, it incorporates how fast or how slow to go when you encounter, maybe we don't even have to call it trauma, but when we encounter resistance, yeah. right? And one way to, to work with this, um, I, for me, I don't split them individually. And the reason is because, especially when there's trauma, mm -hmm. and even if they fully trust me, right? Yeah. Yeah. The risk for me is that they don't know what I do in the session, in the individual session with their partner and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And they don't, not because they don't trust me, they don't maybe trust their partner and what they reveal to me in the, those individual sessions. Mm -hmm. There's this like uh, unknown, right? Okay. So I like to have everything out in the open in the couple's room mm -hmm. and I work with it in real time that resistance. Mm -hmm. It's very common, even when there's no trauma, for something to be outside of someone's window of tolerance, whether it is a form of sharing, uh, a form of expressing, or a form of receiving the other person expressing. It can be, it can be very um, disjointing. Imagine, uh, uh, and even though this is not about infidelity, my example, it will be something completely different, but it will be still re re related to people going through um, uh, uh, resistance. So imagine for 20 years, you yeah. see your husband he is one way. You, you visualize him. You're prepared for this one way, whatever that one way is. Yeah. Let's say very cold, very closed off, you know, and you've always wanted uh, more connection. You've wanted him to be softer. You wanted him to be warmer. You wanted him to be short up and be uh, emotive. And you've been asking for this for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And if he shows up a little bit in that way and you're not ready for it because it's so different than what you're used to, even if he was extremely vulnerable in how he shared. Mm -hmm. it's, it can be very hard for some people to let that in because it's so, uh, so much of a risk mm -hmm. to see him in a new light, even though in this moment, she, mm -hmm. she believes everything about how he shared that it's real, but because it's so different than the 20 years of experience, yeah. to let that in can be a can create a lot of resistance. If I let it in, then I have to open up my heart again. And if I open up my heart again, I can be hurt again. I can be betrayed again. I can be abandoned again. And I can't deal with that pain again. Yeah. So the, br the brain shuts off this new image and, they, and it says, uh, I'd rather believe what I'm already used to mm -hmm. because it's safer. So that's just one example, but we work with it. So there's a window of tolerance to be uncomfortable and to share your experience. There's also a window of tolerance as it relates to hearing information, right? It's like a window of tolerance of, even though it's uh, I've, what I've always asked for in my partner, now that I'm getting it, I, I, I don't know if I can let it in, right? It's like, it's a different kind of window of tolerance. It's like, way outside of the realm of what my belief system and my reference point tells me is real. And so I reject it. Yeah. But that's okay. Right. Mm -hmm. We stay with the experience. Maybe he is now hurt because she's not able to let it in. Yeah. Maybe she, uh, you know, is having a very mixed sort of experience mm -hmm. where it's like now versus what's mm -hmm. going on in my head. And it's creating this like very like confused state. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we are able to reflect it as a very mixed experience. And that's okay. We follow wherever it goes in order to organize it. Yeah. So if, if partly, you know, if they say, I don't know, because I hear a lot from clients, 
like I say that, for example, what message do you get? What thought um, comes across your mind? What do you hear in your in your head right now when you see that or all of this? They say, I don't know. I don't know. Like sometimes, like or I say that, what do you feel in your body right now? What is happening in your body? I scan your body or be in touch. They say, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like it's because they don't want to share or become vulnerable. Or well, each each case is gonna be very different, right? So are you talking about after the partner has shared vulnerably? And then you're checking in, or are you talking more about when you're assembling someone's emotion yes. in, in response to the cycle? Yeah, yeah. So this is very common. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, remember in in the model like rev. Mm -hmm. So the idea of revving for me is you're trying to do whatever is necessary to bring up the primary experience. So if someone says, let's say they, they tell you, I don't know, when you ask them, check in with your body. I don't know what's happening. I bring it back to the cycle. So let's just say we're talking about, so let's say we're working with him. And mm -hmm. he says, I don't know, in response yeah. to her, her saying, give me an example. What is she saying that's a, that you would think is a trigger? And he then says, I don't know, too. Give me an example. So we'll work with your specific situation oh do you want me to give you an example what is it connected to when you're asking him or her give me something you're in your mind that you're thinking that they someone in the past has said i don't know to what is their partner's behavior that you're then trying to understand what mm -hmm. their experience Impact. is around mm -hmm. yeah so what did okay. she do or what did he do that you're wanting to get under as far as how it impacts them Okay, like for example, I had another couple last night that uh, mm -hmm. um, like husband wanted to be in touch with his friend, but the woman, wife actually doesn't want, you know, him mm. to meet, to see mm -hmm. that friend, you know, it's right. very triggered, you know, gets so triggered when. Right, good. So she's triggered. Yeah. What does she do to him when she's triggered about him getting in touch with his friend? What does she do to him? How does she like, show that she's triggered? So um, she just, uh, for example, he, he wanted the friend wanted to come to their, you know, their home. And mm -hmm. she told him that, no, you can't have him here. Okay. So she said no. Yeah. And you asked him, what's that like for you, for her to say no or something like that? Yeah. I actually, I stayed with her because the okay. guy is very avoidant. Okay. Like, um, and... Uh, but the woman is so all over the place. I wanted first to actually um, sure. acknowledge but who's, that I'm... Who's, who's the one that's saying, I don't know, in this case? The woman, actually. Okay. She so she, she told me that I just don't want it. That's okay. all. You know, I don't okay. want to explain anything. I don't okay. want to you to get into my emotions. Ah. I hated that. I don't want okay. to. That's the so only it's thing not, that I so want. It's, it's, so it's not, I don't know. It's, I don't want. No, I started with, I don't know, but I, I started again, pushing you, going to okay. your body. Okay. Going, and all of a sudden, she got triggered. I so, don't... Let's, so let's go back to the beginning. So his behavior is he wants to reach out to some friend. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a trigger for her. Yes? And so instead of asking her, what's it like in your body? You can rev up the behavior. Mm -hmm. So based on whatever you know about this couple, yeah. so when your partner goes and sees this friend, you can start with, I like to start with, what's the message that you get from yeah. him? What's the message? So what do you think the message is? What's the message he's sending to her in her mind? Yeah. What do you Even think? Though. Even if you don't know, what do you, what, what would you guess? I don't matter. Is? He doesn't care about me. I'm not important. You know, Perfect. he actually prefers somebody. He over doesn't me. care. He cares yeah. about them more than me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what's it like for you and bring in, there's different ways to rev. So right now, this is one of the best tools right now. When you think in your head, he cares about this other person more than you. He'd rather spend time with them than you. Right now in this moment, what comes up for you when you think that to yourself? 
and 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 give me you you play her what would she say give me a resistance exactly this happened because give I me a resistance yeah give, 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 play, play i don't her. want to i don't want to talk about me if he loves me he has to accept that okay. this is my trigger and i don't okay. want so this is this and is actually this he, is really actually, hard for you to talk about yeah yeah, I, yeah. I think that. No, so it's but, really hard for you to talk about. It's really scary. What comes okay, up for you, you know now as, as you talk about it? Yes. Okay, I, I can actually do the play, play role please, because please she actually got up. She got up and she told me that it's so much for me. I have to leave. And okay. I told her, if you want, you can sit outside and do some breathing. Yeah. Go, no, 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 I have to leave. And she left. Just okay. Time. Okay. It was that much, you know, because I started yeah. like, digging into her emotions. This is the this is the challenge is so... you have to, you have to be able to calibrate to know what your client in that moment's window of tolerance is. So you pushed beyond the window of tolerance for her. What you wanted so I like this analogy of the ocean. Right? You've got mm -hmm. the sky. Sky yeah. is easy, sky is blue, it's beautiful, right? Yeah. Clients it's like their their content. They can talk about it all day long. Yeah. Okay. Under the sky, you've got clouds, maybe gray clouds. I can talk about it, but it's not fun. Okay. This might be, I can talk about my behavior, their behavior, right? Secondary responses, right? Then now, as we're getting closer to the water, we've got right on top of the water. This might be, I get frustrated. This is what I do, it, but it's still very secondary. Now, and for every, each person, it's different. Some people have very uh, good access to their primary and they can go right into the depths of the ocean. But I'm sort of saying what's for this particular mm -hmm. client, let's say. So for them, just mm -hmm. going right underneath the water, like treading the water, just to say, uh, this is hard for me to talk about. That might be all they can do right now. And that's okay, right? In order to make them be able to go under the water, they have to feel like anytime they want, they could come back above the water and, and, and get air. They need to know you can go underwater, you can come up. You can go underwater, you can come up. Okay, how, how can never... you bring them up? You know, because, you know, yeah, any, so, any kind of... Yeah, yeah. so uh, remember the idea of thin slicing? Thin slicing. No. So thin slicing. So oh, thin, EFT, thin yeah, slicing. Yeah, thin yeah, slicing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. 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 EFT is an exposure therapy, yes, right? Yes. Yeah. We expose them to what's uncomfortable very slowly. And once they master one level, then you expose them to the next level. You don't go beyond their comfort level. So can I just, you know, I know that we are we don't have too much time, but uh, um, with this couple, I had almost like eight sessions before, and I did EFT in different sessions all over different topics. And however, you know, they come with a topic and they want me to help them. It's like that for them. It's like, so, uh, but so let me ask you, is the topic content or is the topic experience? Sometimes it's content. You know, they bring a content and they have conflict and they want to actually the third person right. be there and they discuss, you know, and I, you know. And if you, and if you follow their guidance, it's not EFT. What you want to do is under each topic, yeah. you want to get underneath yes. so that it's about their experience. Then exactly. as yeah. you, regardless of the topics, you'll start yeah. to see the same pattern emerge. Yes. And from that pattern, when you zoom in, and you zoom out, what you're going to get is it's going to extrapolate to all their topics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK, so there is something that, you know, sometimes, you know, partner, they have like perpetual conflict. They can't get to any kind of sort of agreement. But so they have contract. So in, in this topic, their contract was whatever she wants, you know, they, between themselves. I, did, I didn't you, did you ask them what the contract is for? 
for it about this topic of French, this friend. That that's what it's that's what the contract states. What is the contract for? What does it serve for both of them? Oh, the woman actually is the uh, regulation. <laughs> right. Contract is to build safety because it's a substitute for feeling safe. So you don't feel yeah. safe. If you can't share that you don't feel safe, you can yeah. put all the contracts no, no, in the no, world. No, 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 she shared. No, she shared. But I saw something in her eyes right away. I told myself, oh, oh, I have to catch this. I told her that, you know, the guy started talking about, can you, can you please just slow down? Don't talk right now. I see something I have to. I need to stay focused on what's happening. Your eyes, you know, you are mm, so much emotional. Sure. And she mentioned that I, I, when I see him, the friend, I, I feel totally unsafe and I feel afraid. And I, I told him that I stay here. And for 20, like 10 seconds, I, I was quiet. I was silent. I let her actually feel me that, of course, it's too much. And... The other person goes, um, can you hear her? What did you hear? You know, I started really be gentle because I felt in her face that, you know, her eyes, that something happened. Mm -hmm. And I had experience that, you know, couples dropped off in this situation. I was so, oh my God, something is mm -hmm. happening. But after, right as soon as I mentioned to her that, wow, you feel unsafe. And this, right away, all of a sudden, she actually got so, I can't, I can't stand this. I don't yeah. want to talk about my emotion. It's too much and I, I want to go. Yeah. So it's simply the concept of being ahead of where she's comfortable being. Yeah. Okay. So you when so for one person going underwater is not too difficult. For another person, mm -hmm. even just touching the water is too difficult. So yeah. you have to know what that person's sensitivity is. And then go one level up. And and you know, sometimes I had this happen uh, about a month ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. My default is to go quite fast. Mm -hmm. And then I see, oh, I mean, not fast. I, I, I do assess and I try to uh, see where my clients are at, but I have a default. Yeah. And 99% and of the time, it's, it's not too fast. In this couple, it was too fast yeah. for the wife. And... And she was getting, you know, argumentative and mm -hmm. I felt I have to defend what I'm saying. And so, mm -hmm. okay, so this is too much for you. Let's just mm -hmm. talk about how this is too much for you. Oh, and if it's too, and if it's too talk. much, <laughs> and if it's too much to talk about how it's too much, let's, let's park it and let's, I'll move on to him right now. <laughs> you know, okay. you know what I mean? Us. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. We, it's, helpful. it's, you know, we want to give them autonomy and decision-making powers on how fast to hit the gas, how fast to hit the brake, okay. how fast to hit reverse. Okay. And then they know, we all know we went too far yeah. and they know they have control. Before they even, you will get good at knowing uh, as, even before they're triggered, from the process, not from the other person. They're used to getting triggered from the other person every day, right? Mm -hmm. If they're triggered from the process, you'll get good at knowing it earlier on. And then you go and again, thin slice it and go slow. And sometimes you go, hey, are you, are you, if this is too much, are you okay listening right now? Instead of staying with you if this is too much. Right. And can you put then, it on hold also? Say that if you are not ready, we, we don't have to talk about this topic. We can change. I don't. I don't even want to label it because that might be a trigger to say to someone that they're not ready. Maybe in oh. their mind they're ready, right? I oh. just say, hey, is it okay? We go to him. Are you able to listen like right now? Because if they say yes, if I go to him or the other person, and they get very primary, sometimes yeah. it brings them back. Yes. And it brings them back into the room because now they're not in their uh, associative state. Yeah. So it can be, if, if she, she says that, no, it's too much for me. I don't want to talk about that. Can we just uh, stop it there and say that, okay, we course. respect you. Yeah. It was yeah. Something that, I, yeah. I would say something like, yeah, so this, this is too much for you right now. Right. Mm -hmm. What would you, what would you be comfortable doing right now? Oh. Where, like, what, what are you comfortable with right now? I want to let you know we can spend time with this. We can take a step back. I can go and talk to him for a bit. 
You know, what, what are you comfortable with right now? And then it'll engage their mind. When you engage their mind, their mind is already safe for them. So their mind will say, okay, this, you know, I'll take over. Maybe they'll get controlling and say, oh, yeah, let's talk about this. Or, yeah, you can talk to them. But you're giving them a, a yeah. choice. The, the choice will allow them to recalibrate and, and come back in the room. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. So yeah, you don't want to push too hard because <laughs> here's the thing. If the client has the experience that my therapist is pushing too hard, they're going to have a very bad week. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, they're less likely to come back. And then anything you want to try is going to not work because they're not there. Oh, okay. That was a good one. Thank you so much. Yeah. That yeah. was really helpful. Is that because, yeah, sometimes I think that, no, we have an agenda and we have to get somewhere no, with this agenda no. today. The only and agenda, so, the only yeah. agenda is to join your client and your client okay. is, is the relationship. Mm -hmm. And part of the relationship is both of them. So if they can't be joined in the relationship that you're creating between the three mm -hmm. of them, then, then you can't do anything. There's no agenda, right? Attachment is the agenda. So that's very important. Uh, you can't, you can't uh, again, like a, a horse to water, I can say, here's the water. I can't force you to drink. And if I force you to drink, I'm going to have to pay for that because <laughs> you didn't want to drink. You are going to spit back out right yeah you know what i mean like you know i i can't i can't do the work for you and actually it's not good for us to do the work for our clients because remember when they're out of the session their job is to continue to do the same work in yeah. their home uh, outside of the session oh, okay great so yeah we baby steps the key is yeah. baby steps baby okay. steps the uh there's a saying in eft the slower you go the faster yeah. you go there you go yeah, this is something. The slower that... you go, the faster you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> unless they so unless the, yeah. unless they tell you you're going too okay. slow, <laughs> then yeah. you go faster. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. It was so helpful. Anytime. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, All right. We'll talk to you soon. We can we can yes. book another another one whenever. Sure. Uh, I'm sure you'll have more questions. So next. Yeah, time. a lot actually. Thank you. Okay. Bye. You're welcome. Bye.